Hi everybody. Um, want to talk to you for a second about um, where we are right now and things that are happening and what we are supposed to do and what God is going to do. Okay, so we have a couple things brewing, of course. Um, there's all this mm, desire, I guess, to uh, silence us or to keep us from, um, hang on, I got to turn my light on. Oh, to silence us or to keep us from saying what we want to say, but that never worked for me. So, you know, it is what it is, right? I'm just, I just don't do that. So, um, I want to talk to you about God's part and about our part. Okay. Um, Romans eight twenty eight says, God is always working all things together for good because we love him and he loves us. And it's according to uh, his own will. So even though we don't know, even though we can't see it, uh, there's a lot of things that are happening and we just need to get used to the fact that God is working all things together for good. Okay. He's, he's already gone about making crooked places straight, rough places smooth. He's, um, got a destiny and a purpose and a future for us, even though it may seem delayed or it may seem like things just aren't working out like we want them to, but that doesn't matter because it doesn't mean that he's not working. He is working and he's bigger than us and he's got it all figured out and he knows all the things. <clears throat> he knows all things. He knows everything that's going on. He knows all the factors. He knows all the people. He knows all the history, all the stuff, right? He knows it all. So why don't we just relax and let him do his thing, right? Why don't we do his, let him do his thing. And in the meantime, we get to do our thing, okay? And here's what our thing is. Our thing is that we get to now, um, oh, I don't want that. Hang on. Um, our thing is that we get to um, align ourselves with his purpose. We get to watch him do exceeding abundant above what we could dare ask or think. We get to watch him teach us how to add to our faith uh, patience and perseverance and um, moral excellence and godly character and from uh, 2 Peter um, 1. And so we want to be able to do our part, right? So we want to I talked about this on Saturday night at the encounter service at Open Door that, you know, we have, God's in the prep process with us. So even though it seems like, it's like Joseph being in prison, right? He wanted out of prison. He was there, um, you know, he didn't do anything to get there other than just showed up at the wrong place, wrong time, and there he was falsely accused. And he wanted out when he interpreted the dream for the cupbearer and the butler. This is in Genesis 39, 40, and 41. So, you know, and he ended up in front of Pharaoh. But during the time in prison, when he told the cupbearer, I want out of this place, let me out of this place, um, it took him two more years before he ever got out. And in the, in the meantime, God was doing a process. He was doing something in us. He's in prep process with us right now. While he's working all things together, for good for us, God, we need to do our part. And our part is we need to submit to God. We need to allow him to adjust us, to give us what we, um, he wants to remove from us. Um, we talked about uh, Jeremiah 15 that says, um, you know, if, you'll, if you will separate the precious from the vile, if you will separate this out, then I will make you a fortified wall of bronze and a spokesman for what's coming. And I just feel like that's where we're at. Like we need to separate. We need to break up the fallow ground. We've got to be able to say we're not going to live with a bunch of uh, ground that doesn't produce, uh, doesn't have uh, the groundwork or the, the soil to produce a fruitful harvest. I mean, so we have things that we need to do. We need to um, to get ourselves positioned. We need to have God examine us. He says, search me. We had, David said, search me, try me, see if there's any wicked way in me. Make sure that you teach me your ways. I'll walk in your truth, Psalm 119. Um, he said, you know, we're gonna, you know, we need to be adjusted. We need to be adjusted because just this thing that has happened, just this thing with this election, with all the stuff, with 2020, with the virus, with all this kind of stuff, man, has just messed us up. I mean, it has been like people are wandering around. It, it's, it's almost as if an ax was taken to our head like a chicken and we're all running around trying to bump into each other and we don't know what we're doing and everybody's you know, well, the prophet said this and that and this and that. Well, you know what? Prophets see in part. They prophesy in part. We talked about this before. And 
And God's got a plan. He's got something that he wants to do. So just because it doesn't happen in our time doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And if they saw in part, it could be for a distance. It could be for another time. We don't know. But, but what we do know is that God's word isn't going to fail us. And his preparation process is sure. And we've got to align ourselves with that. And really, you know, just the other day, he told me, you know, you have got to stop looking at all of this junk. You need to look at me. You need to let me define you. You need to let me talk to you. You need to let me, God said, um, bring you into alignment with what I have for you come in the coming days. I mean, we, we aren't going to be able to, to function in the same way we did. So we have to let him teach us his ways. We have entered into a whole new era. That means there's this nothing is going to look the same anymore. Nothing. It's all going to be different. The way God is going to use us is different. The way things are going to be shaped up. The way God's going to build his church, he said, and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. He said, unless God builds a house, we will labor in vain to build it. So, you know, let's just let him. Why don't we just let him? And when we do, all this peace starts coming over us. Because now it's not in our hands. Our hands, the only thing we can do right now is to break up the fallow ground. Break up ground that's been hard, that we've been all freaking out over. We've been, you know, you know, God, do you know that God will actually offend your mind to reveal your heart? Don't you love that? I mean, he, he does it on purpose. He will offend our mind to reveal our heart. And we've got to let him do what he wants to do. He's got, there's things in there that have been unsettled. We've been taught. We've been wandering around. We've been trying to get all this stuff. And God's going, hey, 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 I just want to talk to you for a minute. Give me a second here. Let me give you some instruction. Let me teach you a new way. Let me teach you new things. Let me give you ways that I want you to align yourself with me for the coming days I want you to stay in peace. You need to keep your focus on me. I'll keep you in perfect peace when your mind and your eyes and everything as your heart is stayed on me. I will keep you in perfect peace. I will give you the ability to navigate rough waters when things don't look right if you'll just look at me. So if he's going to do and is doing a new thing and he's always working all things together for good, according to, to Romans 8, 28, he's always working all things together for good, then we need to let him do it, just period. And and we get to take a self-examination. We need to get before God. He, does, he doesn't condemn us. He doesn't put his finger on our head. He doesn't slap us around. He's not scolding us, nothing. He's just trying to get us ready for what's coming. We are not in the same, we are not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. You know, we are not in Kansas anymore. Things are not going to be the same. And so he's got a, a harvest for us. He's got a uh, something, uh, his will, actually, his kingdom coming, his will being done on this earth, just like it is in heaven. That's what we've been praying for. We've been binding things on earth, binding things in heaven, losing things on earth, losing things in heaven. We're learning how to navigate in kingdom ways. We're learning how to use our authority. We're learning how to move in might and power, you know, and, and be able to accomplish whatever God's doing on this earth right now. So um, that's our directive for right now is what is God's thing? What is he doing and what are we supposed to do? Um, I alluded just a minute ago to Joseph in prison. When he was in prison, it took two more years for him to be ready to, to stand before Pharaoh and to have the kind of authority placed on him to make decisions and to execute a plan to save an entire nation from a famine. And it took him two years more. He didn't want to be there. He didn't like the place he was at. He didn't want to stay in prison. He he begged the, the cupbearer, get me out of this place. And the cupbearer got back into Pharaoh's uh, graces. He, he was the cupbearer once again in the place that he had been taken away from and thrown into prison for that length of time, probably just to meet Joseph, which is another thing. You know, God's giving us these divine opportunities to meet people, to align ourselves with people, to, to make new connections uh, for the things that are coming. So, you know, don't be in a hurry to draw conclusions. 
You know, I remember Paul Kane a long time ago, he was in a meeting that we did, I think in Oregon or something, and he said, most heresy is birthed from people who draw conclusions from things that have only been shown to them in part. We've only seen in part. We only know a little bit. We only know some things. We don't know all things. God knows all things. And so our position right now is to do a self-exam, to let God do the preparation. We are in prep mode. Let him do the preparation that he has for us because in this new era, in this new place that we're in, it will not be accessible for you to go back, reach in to the past and drag in to this new place, this new era, things that we did in the past. They won't work. They just won't. So our lives have been sold out for him anyway. We've always allowed him to take over. Let's let him do it, right? Let's let him do this. And let's let him work this stuff out. Um, get before the, the Lord. That's your best, that is your best place right now. Get before God. Let him talk to you. Let him give you what he wants you to do. He won't overload you. He never gives you more things than what you're able to bear. And let him teach you his ways. Let him teach us his ways. He's doing new things. New things require new adjustments, new ways of thinking, new um, thoughts, new revelation. I mean, just look at this year. You know, we didn't see this thing coming. I didn't. I didn't see some kind of weird virus coming and everybody being all masked up, freaked out and cellophane wrapped and whatever else. You know, I didn't see this and I know it has been a challenge and a horrifying thing for some people and families have lost family members. It has not been good. And, and we pray for them, man, we do not want anything like this to happen to any family anywhere, anytime. We didn't see it coming, though. We didn't see it coming. On the other hand, there are things coming from heaven that we don't see coming. That means good things. That means God things. That means God is working his will out in us. So we didn't see it coming. Here we go. This is good. This is real good. So I want us to remember that we're we're in process. We're in prep mode. Don't get ahead of him. Don't start adding things to your life. Don't start adding things to, to bring con to conclusion things that God has only shown us in part. That's just dumb. I mean, straight up, that's just dumb. That's just dumb. Because he sees it all, we don't see it all. So here we are all trying to navigate, do all these things, and it's like, pfft. You know, that's why Jesus said, hey, if the Lord wills, <laughs> I'm going to see you tomorrow, you know. I, don't say tomorrow I'm going to do this or that. If the Lord wills, if the Lord wills, we're going to do this or that, you know. I'm I'm an outreach leader and creator. I'm creating a whole army full of people who are bold and willing to, to do whatever it takes. But we need to be trained. And we need to be on task. And we need to be single-minded. And we need to stop listening to everyone else's voice and listen to him. So God's going to see to it. We've been praying. We've been crying out to heaven. We've been asking God to restore us, to heal our land, to bring us into, you know, the U.S. is a huge influence to the entire world. And with the harvest coming, we are going to be a, a leader in God things. But he's going to do things differently. And we've got to be okay with that. We have to be okay with him doing something different. You know, when, when renewal broke out back in the 90s, we were all, we had no idea, we had no grid for the kind of uh, demonstration of the Holy Spirit's power and what he was going to do. And and I'm not kidding you, all of us were like, what on earth is this thing happening to us? But we, but again, God had this idea that he's God. He has this idea that he's God. And he can do what he wants to do and he's going to do it, so... Okay, I want to, um, got some things coming up. I've got an intermediate dream class tonight. We've got a, a advanced dream class, I think, next thir uh, Wednesday night. We've got um, the podcast on charisma, and we're starting to beef that up and, and give it more attention and also uh, be able to to educate 
to um, give a, give wisdom out on the podcast, uh, how we need to, to position ourselves and navigate. Uh, I'm going to get into the uh, psychic versus prophet stuff on the podcast uh, to teach you how to how how they work differently, <laughs> you know, because it's a spirit element. However, one is tuned into the wrong receiver, right? Um, so we're going to get into that. We're going to do a lot of training. I have a navigation form coming up toward the end of the month, I think, and that's new. We've never done that before. Uh, we're going to have another dream form. Those are always fun. Please go to my YouTube channel and like it. Um, I need for you to like it and share it. And, um, you know, we're, I don't know how long we'll get to be on there. I've got a lot of diverse things on my YouTube channel. A lot of outreaches. We did Awaken the Dead for the first time on Halloween. That was fun. We're going to do another one. Um, we just like it, you know. The weirder the better for me. I don't care. Um, and just go out and see what people are doing, what they're thinking, how things are happening right now. I want to reach into the hearts of people that are that are really hopeless, that feel like there's there's no hope. And just give them hope. You know, just give them hope. Uh, that's something you can do right now, just at the grocery store or wherever else. Just give people hope. You know, it wasn't, I think it was a week ago or something, I was at the store and I noticed a magazine on the rack, you know, when they all have them checking out. And it um, it had something about a dream or somebody had a dream or something. And I went, oh, that's crazy. I said, uh, so-and-so had a dream. I don't even remember who it was. And the checker said to me, oh my gosh, I just had this weird dream last night. And I went, Really? tell me about it. And I was able to interpret her dream and tell her that what God's message was for her within that dream. So it just doesn't, you don't have to go out on the streets all the time. You can just be anywhere, just whatever you're doing, you know, just be kind and be open and be receptive to people. It can change their entire uh, outlook on life and it can, it can change everything going on in their home. People need direction right now. The church needs direction. We need direction. And God is telling us, look, I want to give you new things. You've got to get before me. So, okay. Um, also, uh, sign up for the shout on my on my uh, website. It's cindymcgill.org. And sign up for the shout. Please become a partner with us monthly. We really need that in order to operate we need to bring on more staff we have things things are growing very quickly and we've got to get things positioned and, and ready for us to to move forward effectively so um, if you do uh, if you're a partner with us we're going to give you some extras we're going to give you uh, links to some of our training that we're doing we're going to for free we're going to let you come to uh, the the new training that we're creating launching the first of the year used to be the boot camp. We're coming up with a new name for it. And um, we just want you to be blessed because you're blessing us. And we just want to sincerely thank you. So, all right, guys. Um, I think that's about it. And let me know how you're doing. Make sure and do something in the comments. You know, let me know. I always wonder, are you listening? Are you listening? You know, so anyway, um, We'll share this on the on the Instagram too. So, all right, guys, um, peace out. I will be with you again, uh, probably sooner than later. And um, yeah, so all right, talk to you soon. Remember, break up the fallow ground. Jeremiah fifteen, I think it's fifteen, nineteen twenty, fifteen nineteen to twenty. Break up the fallow ground. Uh, it's time to you know just break up get rid or, or excuse me break up your fallow ground separate the precious from the vile the break up the fallow ground is in hosea it's in the book of hosea so um but the two go together all right love you guys talk to you soon okay bye